Cosmic Optic Tutorial. Alright, today guys, I'm going to teach you how to install a rear backup camera and screen in your vehicle. These are all the tools you're going to need, along with your connectors, to perform this. This is your rear backup camera I'm going to be mounting to the license plate. And right here is your screen, all your cables and hookups, video cable. It's going to be your mounting uh, deck and your remote. Right here, we have your T-taps to tap into your factory wires and quick connectors to go into them. You've got your uh, panel poppers for all panels to prevent you from breaking any uh, clips in the car. Uh, this is your J-hook tool. It's gonna be for taking apart the dash or anything. And we have our wire crimpers, our speed strippers, which make it absolutely a must. Uh, channel locks is gonna be used to close our T-taps. Screwdriver, you wanna have your multiple bits and multimeter. Right, guys today I'm going to teach you how to install this rear backup camera and screen on a 2007 f-150 so let's get started so this is going to be step one of this process as we do this install uh, we're going to go ahead and locate our reverse wire in the f-150 it's going to be in this front quarter panel uh, first off you want to pop off your rubber gasket for your door it's going to give you a little bit of uh, room to free up this panel you got a clip that's going to pop this way and one on the other side. You're going to want to pull the other one out and then with your fingers slowly popping it away. To locate the parking wire, you're going to want to put on your parking brake, your emergency brake. Because the only way to find this is we're going to have to put in the key and actually put the car in reverse while, while we're checking it with our multimeter. So we've located our parking brake wire, which is going to be this pink, this black one with a pink stripe right here. All right, how we're going to check for this, we're going to go ahead and ground our multimeter out. Then we are going to use the spike, penetrate through the sheath. And then in this process, you'll have to need a buddy who's going to put the igni uh, keys in the ignition and put it in reverse while I have the parking brake down. All right, now you can see you're getting your 12 volts through that. So this is the wire we're going to use to hook to our green wire on the backup camera. Okay, this is your standard T-taps. Uh, we're going to use 18 gauge, which is what's usually always in our factory wiring. Uh, to put one of these on, we're going to use some channel locks to lock it down tight because this actually slides in, slices the sheath on the wire. Then once we have this closed and locked, we'll be able to slide our parking brake wire uh, right inside there. So now what we're going to do is we're going to locate a 12 volt constant. This means you're going to get 12 volts through the wire even with the ignition switched off. So we've located our wire. Uh, it's going to be your constant, which is hot all the time. And we can go ahead and check this with our multimeter. And there you go. 12 volts right there. So our next step is we want to make a ground. Um, easy enough, we do actually have a factory ground here that we can use our ring terminal with our wire, mount it right behind that, that'll work. If we don't have an existing here, what you'd wanna do is scrape the paint off of your panel so you can get a good connection. Then use a self-tapping screw and you would mount this ring terminal right here. Now that we have our ground hooked up, <clears throat> we have our constant and our reverse wire. 
Now we can go ahead and put on our uh, reconnect. So we also have a small fuse in here. Uh, anything you connect uh, inside a vehicle, you always want it fused. Uh, without that, you'll get a fire and you'll ruin your product. Constant to our 12 volt constant. And with these quick connects, it makes it extremely easy. That's how it's going to look when it's finished. For this particular install, to take apart the underside of the dash where we're going to run the wire, usually it's going to always be a quarter inch. So also you're gonna need some standard uh, zip ties to connect all these wires. Now that we've run our wire up to this point underneath the column, we're gonna go ahead and take off our face plate to our radio. Now uh, this is where your hook tool is gonna to come in handy. You wanna be careful with this so you don't scar the uh, dash up. And just slowly wedge it behind, then pry up. I like to use my fingers just to be safe, that we don't pull on anything too hard and scratch or damage it. You really don't have to proceed any further because we're going to be able to feed our wire right up through here, grab it with our hand, <clears throat> we're going to run it up, alongside of this and right out through here and pull it through. So now we have our wire out and ready. Now what we're gonna do to feed this wire through here, we're gonna take these two bolts off. Then we'll connect it together. Once we connect it, I'll go ahead and slip and pop it right behind there. All right. Now that we've got that taken care of, <clears throat> check, make sure we still have some length there. We'll go ahead and lock it down. And you can go ahead and put that panel back together. So now what we're gonna do is uh, we're going to run our wire along the underside of the uh, frame and we're going to connect it to the camera. All right, so for this truck, we had to buy some additional wire. Uh, really, all you need is 1820 gauge. Okay, uh, buy at least, I'd say, 18 feet. You want to go over, it's probably going to be, we need about 12 to 15 feet. So, right now, before I even connect it, I'm gonna go up through the firewall, through a grommet, come out under the hood, and this is where we're gonna to start to run our wire uh, underneath. And also with this, when you run a wire underneath a vehicle, we need to get a uh, wire loom. All right. Um, now, this is what your wire loom is. Uh, you can find it at, you know, any of your auto parts stores should have it. This is gonna protect the wire from uh, you know, moisture, getting scrapes, and it has a thermal uh, rating on it as well. This is gonna be your wiring harness we're gonna go through. Okay, so it has a rubber grommet on the side of it. And what we're gonna do is we'll feed the wire right through. Just pulled our wire through. They came through the boot or, or the grommet that this wire was from. So now we're just gonna pull, so we're gonna wanna get most all of our length through here. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and loom this wire. It's gonna be run right next to the engine so you wanna protect it from the heat. So you just slip this right in and you can actually, if you kind of rotate it and slide with your finger, you can kind of push all of this in here. They do make a tool for this, but it's not really needed. It doesn't take that long. So I've run this wire 
I've loomed it, dropped it right, right on the side of this wheel well. So this puts us right up against the frame. Uh, avoid anything with your suspension and steering. Uh, we're gonna just go right here. We're gonna go back, and then we're gonna uh, we're gonna loom it some more, and then we're gonna start zip tying. You have a lot of wires up here. Run. Don't run it on the bottom of this uh, your frame rail. Because if you ever have a problem with a tire coming off, I mean, you'll basically tear all the wiring. So you'll want to run on the top side of it. Now we got our little fuse holder. I uh, got a mini because it'll fit down here a little easier. So the ends are already pre-stripped. You just have to pull the end off, twist it, and then we have a butt connector here. All right, and this is what we're going to use to connect our two wires together. So now we're going to go ahead and run our video run. Um, for this purpose, we're going to run it through the back. We have some vents on the truck we can run it through. Uh, all I'm doing is avoiding the heat of the engine. Uh, these wires are extremely fragile. Uh, if you heat them up, uh, the tiny filament in the, in the center of it that runs the video is not very thick, so it can easily break. So we're going to go behind here. So plain and simple. You got some little uh, pressure clips. We're just going to pop them. And pop down all the way. All right. And here's our video. <clears throat> go into our screen. I'm just going to plug it in. Also, always run electrical tape over these connections, especially a video connection. <clears throat> now for your video wire, you're going to do the same thing. You want it right along with all your power wire, exact same way. Loom it, zip tie it, and then we'll go from there. We have our power in that's going to plug into our uh, our backup camera. This is our two wires, our power and our ground, which we've already run right up to here. So now what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of some of this slack, and then we're going to splice this in. Now, obviously, I'm not going to use this whole thing. I'm going to cut it down a little bit, but never cut it too far. Because if you need to uninstall this and reinstall it in another vehicle, you want enough leeway so that way you'll be able to do that. Now we're going to go ahead and splice these wires and connect them in. Now, to connect these again, using the same as we connected the fuse hole. Uh, this is just a, uh, a butt wire connector. Now we have a bunch of excess, so we're gonna need to zip tie this up. So now you fed your wires through, we're gonna go ahead and connect our video cable. All right, after connecting your video cable, you wanna go ahead and electrical tape that to go ahead and insulate it and make sure nothing happens to the uh, two wires.
now that we've secured all of our wires underneath the vehicle, we can go ahead and attach our rear view cam. All right. Now after we do this, we have two screws on the top that we can use to adjust the camera up or down. You want to do this after you have everything set up and tested. That way you can calibrate where you want the height to be on the camera. So we'll just screw them in lightly first with our hands and then you can finish it up with a drill or just a hand wrench. 